agriculture is the mainstay of the Kenyan economy. However, after many years of farming, land loses its fertility and yields decline. Increased destructive tillage practices have led to soil degradation, resulting in loss of soil structure and erosion. In addition, farmers face the challenges of insufficient irrigation water and more erratic rainfall patterns, increasing soil salinity and costly farm inputs, making it difficult for them to make a profit and to produce enough food to ensure their food security. Low crop yields mean less income for the farmer. However, with the introduction of conservation agriculture, farmers can now adopt a production system that has economic, environmental and agronomic benefits. In this video, we will learn how farmers in Kenya are using tractors to adopt conservation agriculture. So, what is conservation agriculture? Conservation agriculture is an arable farming system that promotes minimum soil disturbance, maintenance of a permanent soil cover, and diversification of plant species. It enhances biodiversity and natural biological processes above and below the soil surface, which contributes to increased water and nutrient use efficiency and to improved and sustained crop production. This soil is the biggest uh, resource we have as farmers. So we are able to conserve this soil uh, through conservation agriculture to increase yield in their farms. What we see uh, in this farm is what we call minimum tillage and minimum tillage is basically minimum soil disturbance. You will only open up the soil for the purposes of seed placement and fertilizer placement and there's no need of turning and churning the soil as that leads to our soils being loose and that encourages soil erosion. And soil erosion leads to loss of nutrients and that's what we don't want to see in our farms. Mechanized ripping is one of the techniques in conservation agriculture. In this technique, a disc plow is replaced with a ripper or a chisel plow. This is because disc plows destroy the soil structure and their continuous use creates a hard pan, which prevents crop roots from accessing water and nutrients stored in the soil profile. Ripping is achieved in this way. Uh, the ripper uh, has three parts. We have what we call the coulter, we have the tine, and we have what we call the crumbler. The tine is what helps us in achieving the depth, uh, whereas the coulter helps us in cutting the residue in the farm. So uh, ripping is achieved when the hard pan is broken. Before you start ripping your land, make sure the ripper is level to the ground and adjusted correctly by the help of the top link and arms. Ensure the spacing between the tines is set at the required row width for maize, which is 75 centimeters or 90 centimeters, depending on the agroecological zones. For the lower zones, for example, Lower Eastern, Western and Nyanza, 90 centimeters spacing is recommended, while in high potential zones, for example, Central Rift, and Upper Eastern, a spacing of 75 centimeters is recommended as stipulated by the Ministry of Agriculture. As the rip lines are permanent and are used year after year to avoid soil disturbance and concentrate nutrients, plant population for rotation crops is achieved by adjusting the number of seeds planted per meter of the rip line. The crumblers should be adjusted to a suitable height in order to achieve the desired ripping depth and break the soil clods. Adjustment can be done two to three times with test ripping exercise until the desired depth is achieved. The reaper should rip to a depth of 25 to 30 centimeters to break the hard pan caused by continuous use of disc plows and other farming operations. After making sure that the ripper is set up correctly, the next step is to embark on the actual ripping. It is very important that the tractor driver selects the float setting on the rear lift arms and does not control ripping depth by manually adjusting the height of the lift arms using the hydraulics. 
A tractor with a minimum of 75 horsepower and preferably four-wheel drive is recommended for a two-time ripper. The tractor is driven across the slope to avoid erosion while establishing the first and second rip line simultaneously. Once you have established the first and second straight lines, the third rip line should be exactly the same row width from the second one. This can be achieved by aligning the front tractor wheel to the previous rip line. Please note, for the best results, ripping should be done during the dry season. Avoid ripping while the moisture content is too high as this will lead to further soil compaction. After preparing the land, apply four double handfuls of well-decomposed manure per meter of the rip line. Then, cover slightly. Do not leave manure exposed to the sun. Apply the recommended rate of fertilizer in the rip line. The final step is to plant at the onset of the rains. Let us remind ourselves of the benefits of mechanized ripping. Ripping saves time. It only takes 30 minutes to rip one acre as compared to 60 minutes required to disc plow one acre. It saves fuel. Ripping only consumes 4 liters of diesel per acre as compared to 10 liters consumed while disc plowing. It conserves soil structure and moisture. And it reduces the tear and wear of the tractor, hence it is good for boosting production and is safer for the environment. Mbele kabla sijanza siye nilikuwa kona pata gunia nane, tisa, sita, kurudi chini. Lakini wakati nilipo anza siye, mwaka wakwanza nilipata gunia zarazini na sita. Na nilifuraia sana. Kutoka hapo, nilipata chakula cha kutosha katika boma langu. Mwaka unapita, nikiwa na chakula katika boma rangu. Nimeweza kusomesha watoto wangu, nikona kijana wako university, nikona wasichana wako secondary school. Na apart from that, sije ajiliwa kazi yoyote ingine. Nikona shaba kubwa na sikuwa ninaweza kuirima yote. Lakini tangu niingia siye, imenifaidi sana. Kwa sababu kulima na limaga tupe nataka kulima viazi. Kuchoka, niliweka jembe kado, paka nyama ikapata pali ya kushikiria.